how nice does the shop look right now? Is it pretty? Is that a real question? Yeah. <laughs> Let's see. From here up is what I want. I can see your legs. Can you see my, fa my face? Yes. All right, now you can see my I can, face. I can see your face the whole time. Can you see this part? Yes. No, nothing down here? Not, um, just barely. Okay, that's perfect. Okay. So a lot of you guys have been asking me uh, what I use to prototype fiberglass parts. You see me using foam, um, and I use a very specific kind of foam based on trial and error. And so I wanted to talk about the different kinds of foam people use and which ones I think are the best to use and which ones you need to stay away from. The four kind of foams that you're going to see are uh, wet floral foam. You'll see like spray foam, aka great stuff. This uh, insulation foam board, and then this dry floral foam. Don't use the wet stuff. Yeah, right. Yeah, don't. Um, this you can see this is brown. It actually doesn't start brown. It, it starts out looking like this, and it's for like floral arrangements that need water. I guess I don't really know. I don't do floral arrangements, but. This stuff is dangerous. When I first posted a video of me sculpting with the dry foam, uh, a lot of you guys thought it was this wet foam, which is actually made with formaldehyde. Flam formaldehyde? Four? I don't know. It's the same stuff they use to like preserve dead animals and people. Do people, they do that with people? Anyway, it's not safe. So um, you can see like this has been out in the sun and it's like turned really brown. I'm actually kind of scared to open it. I've been saving it for this video um, and I'm not gonna open it because it's pretty toxic. The next thing is great stuff, and uh, there's a guy on the internet, actually there are a few guys on the internet that make fiberglass stuff with this. Um, Tyler Fialco is one, I think that's how you, maybe it's just Falco, I don't know. Um, and then also uh, Kyle Reese made a whole wide body out of this stuff. Now I've used this stuff before, and um, I don't hate it, uh, but something that I don't like about it is it's not very easy to cut and it's very hard to get really clean. Now, the good part about that is you can use like a sander or something on this stuff and shape it, and I'll show you that in a minute. Uh, but just cutting and sculpting with like a knife, which is what I like to do, um, is very difficult with this. You have to use some sort of like serrated blade, and it just doesn't get as smooth as I'd like to get it. Uh, the next thing that I use is, uh, is this. This is a foam board from Lowe's, or from any sort of hardware store. It comes in a really huge sheet, and it's an insulation panel for your home. Uh, we probably should have used this on our house. It would have made it not so cold. Um, anyway, you cut out sections of it and you can glue it together with some Super 77 adhesive, which is just a spray adhesive. You spray it on both sides, stick it together, and it's stuck. Um, and then you can shape out of that. Kind of the same way with the great stuff here. I've prototyped parts with this and it works okay, um, specifically for really big parts, but getting it smooth and getting a shape out of it is just, it's time consuming and it's kind of difficult. So same thing here, if you sand with this, like, it just doesn't do anything. I mean, it just doesn't do anything. So I don't really like this because it just takes too long for me. Um, this is the stuff I finally settled on. It is green floral foam, and it's the dry kind, so it's not made with formaldehyde. And, um, and it sculpts really easy. It's a lot harder than this wet foam is, but it's a lot softer than these other two. And so what I like about it is like I can take a putty knife which has been the tool that I've been using the most on this, and just cut the sections out until I get the shape that I want. Just like that. And then uh, take some sandpaper, or in this case, a scuff pad, because it was here. And you can just sand that shape smooth, and it gets really smooth. Um, and then if you need like a, a different shape, you can use your finger or a block or whatever. And you can get another shape in there. So if you look at this stuff a little bit closer, you can see that the shape is really smooth and it makes a really nice contour and it's easy to get there. Another plus is that you can put fiberglass directly on top of this. So this stuff will not melt with fiberglass. Some of these others will. Um, you can. Now I don't recommend it because like I found in the first fenders that I built, if you do that, you get some of this stuff just stuck in your part forever. Uh, it doesn't seem to cause any strength issues, I just don't like it. So what I've started doing is covering it in tape. Um, I've tried blue tape, I've done packaging tape. What it looks like most of the bigger shops do is the aluminum foil tape. So I'm gonna try that next, um, but you'll cover it in tape and then cover that in fiberglass and you have a negative of your piece. So it's pretty cool. This stuff, obviously, it's not as smooth and I sand it just as much. Um, so I like the, the speed of this, especially for YouTube. 
this is not super fast, and I I really don't like the great stuff method, but you know, to each his own. Um, and then don't use this stuff; it it'll kill you.